Welcome to Levita Rosa. I'm your host, Pinky, and today we're going to be talking about Love is Blind Season 4. So if you'd like to see more than just stay tuned, like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into this video. Going into Season 4, I wasn't the most hopeful because of last season. I mean, as if the season itself wasn't bad enough with a lot of these couples not being compatible or seemingly matching just because they wanted to be on the show. People making up stories to suit their own false narratives or just not ready to be married. It was a very discouraging season. And then to top it all off, we had this huge scandal with SK who fooled a good bit of us. We thought he was a great guy and he was actually out here um, being a whole player, cheating on Raven and flying multiple women out, lying to them all while being in school. Like where did he even find the time? I guess we were supposed to be more hopeful about this season because it is an older cast. I actually wanted to see more black people, black women in particular, make it into a coupling. We did get at least one, so congratulations. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with that couple. We have Tiffany, who is 36, and we have Brett, who is 35, and they had a really cute love story. She thought she was too old for this. She said she didn't really have much hope in it, but I think secretly deep down, like why else would you do something like this? So Brett pretty much said that he comes from poverty. There was a time in his life where he had to live for two weeks without any electricity, just candlelight. It just makes you grateful for what you do have when you hear where people come from. And it also is very encouraging to see someone who started off that way and now he got recruited to Nike with no college degree and you know clearly he's very successful in life now he also dealt with losing his brother after being with his fiance for 10 years his brother was getting married they went to go get their suits tailored and everything and his brother never made it down the aisle because he ended up being in a car wreck this was a huge loss for him so he was very he got very vulnerable with Tiffany. He was crying. He just came off very genuine. Like him and Tiffany's conversation was so natural. They just have a natural banter and they both seem like they have a very similar temperament. So they seem to make a very good match. So later on, he gifted her his first shoe design. It was like a little miniature version. And you know, when he did that, she ended up professing her love to him. When she said, I love you, he responded by saying he's just so uncomfortable with the word love because that's not a word that his family uses with each other a lot. And, you know, that concerned Tiffany a little bit. Like, are you going to run now? He was like, no, I'm not going to run away. I'm going to face his head on. Like, he wants to embrace that word. It's just going to take some work because that's not something he's used to. And so he, he started getting a little deeper talking about how he feels like they are a great match for each other, the perfect match for each other. And Tiffany ends up falling asleep. <laughs> and like he's just talking like he's like he's low key professing his love for her, just not saying the word and just talking about how much he cares about her or whatever. And then he's like, Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany. So he keeps calling her name and Tiffany is girl she is knocked out okay I believe Tiffany was drunk because <laughs> I like I said he kept calling her name calling her name I wish he would have shouted her name one good time like Tiffany you know like you know shake her up a little bit but that might not have even worked because later on when the girls came in and saw that she was asleep they, they were trying to wake her up they couldn't hardly get her up girl she was knocked out cold like they had to really like shake her like Tiffany wake up she said she was really tired but you could tell she was a little tipsy when she got up but on the other side of things he was confused like I would think he probably didn't know whether she got up and left like he's sitting up here having a serious conversation and all of a sudden he is not getting any response at all so obviously he felt some type of way about that by the time he left, he was just completely irritated with her. But the next time they met up with each other, she was apologetic, you know, she was like, your voice was just so soothing. And honestly, I believe that because my boyfriend has done that plenty of times to me where we've talked on the phone and he's fell asleep and I was just like, why are you falling asleep on me we're talking like i'm in the middle of my conversation you just knocked out and he would always be like well your voice is just so soothing it just put me to sleep so i low-key even though that sounds like an excuse i could totally believe that 
But you know what? Brett is a grown man. He's a real man, okay? He's not gonna let that little small little hiccup even make a dent in the progress that they've had. Even though it, it might've been irritating to him at the time, he was quick to get over it. This is a like small moment in the scheme of things and it's just gonna be a funny story later. And I believe it is because it was hilarious to me when I was watching it. At that point, he decided he was gonna propose and she said, yes, it was such a beautiful moment. And then when she left the pod, she was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I, uh, Tiffany is so funny to me by the way <laughs> but anyway when they met each other for the first time I feel like they had one of the best reveals out of all the seasons let's be honest both of them fine like she is beautiful with a nice body he is very handsome very fit clean cut full head of hair not going bald okay what's not to like okay so when they saw each other they just was like magnets <sighs> they was making out they just couldn't stop kissing each other. And then he got on one knee and he officially proposed. Y'all, I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them. If they don't make it, if he's cheating, if she's cheating, if something happens with them, I'm gonna feel a certain type of way because yes, I am a hopeless romantic. And yes, I still root for people on this show. I can't help it. Plus this is black love, seemingly very healthy black love. And I just have to root for it. <sighs> don't let me down, Tiffany and Brett, cause I'm not, I'm not playing okay so let's move on to Jacqueline and Marsha we're gonna call her Jackie now Marshall is a very sweet and sensitive man um I think a lot of people probably would consider him like nice nerdy dorky but he's very sweet and thoughtful towards Jackie and that's something that Jackie is not used to he's almost the opposite of her in many ways but I feel like both of them are very like jokey jokey and playful but he brings out that soft sensitive side of her whereas she's someone who seems very guarded because maybe she's been hurt a lot in life but she constantly has her guard up but with him she's let her guard down and whenever they have these deep conversations she always is extremely emotional and begins to cry she feels like he sees the real her for instance they had a deep conversation about their parents her parents are super strict so she said as a result she keeps a lot from them she feels like she can't be open with them which is relatable parents don't understand like when you're so strict you don't leave your kids room to be able to have a relationship with you and be open and talk to you because they feel like every word out of their mouth is going to be judged and you're going to automatically you know scold them or give them a lecture when sometimes they just need to be heard so he said when he was younger he wasn't that good at math and so you know when it was time to do, to do homework his dad would just berate him if you don't get this math right you're gonna be homeless on the street and i'm not even gonna stop and give you change and like that really had a huge impact on his self-esteem and when he did walk into math class he would make dumb mistakes because he would just have all this pressure on him to do well she kept telling him to give himself grace give himself grace because he was afraid that when he has children that he was going to be the same type of father and she was like you don't have to do what your father did your father did as good as he could do but you can do better at some point jackie is stuck between marshall and josh marshall ended up professing his love for her and she felt like she had to tell him about what josh said about basically he threatened to leave if she is going to be choosing someone else like i don't want anyone else in this process so if you gonna choose him let me know now so i'm gonna leave i personally feel like that's a manipulation tactic when people do that it's like you're giving them an ultimatum and also it's not my fault you don't have any other connections josh also told her that he couldn't stand hearing marshall talk about her how much he liked her and Marshall felt some type of way like if you feel like that come and talk to me about it don't tell her and you know try to emotionally manipulate her so she gets extremely emotional because you know she has these two men low-key fighting over her but I secretly think she liked the drama I'm gonna be honest with you I think Jackie loves the drama and she thrives in toxicity so eventually you know the men they have their quarters where they live together and basically Marshall confronted Josh about what he said i personally feel like josh just wants to win 
he kept talking about how competitive he is and how he doesn't want to let another man get his woman da, 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 da. and I feel like I don't know that he really likes Jackie he just wants to say he won in that situation but Jackie ended up choosing Marshall and in turn Marshall proposed and you know that was a cute little moment and then when they finally met each other in person like he almost passed out for real he was very impressed by what he saw when he met Jackie and then when he got down on one knee and proposed to her that was so cute but I could tell right then and there Jackie was not all the way attracted to him I'm not saying she thinks he's ugly but it's gonna take some time for him to grow on her you know she just kept saying he's a good man for her he's a good man for her and I feel like she's trying to focus on that like he's a good guy this is what I need this is not something I've had in the past but it's what I need that sort of way of thinking doesn't always work especially if the person is shallow so we'll see how their relationship plays out in the future the next couples are kind of hard to talk about because there's like so many love triangles going on between these people i'm gonna start with paul so paul is an environmental scientist from new orleans and he's kind of quirky but he is interested in amber and micah him and amber really had this great rapport both of them are kind of like on the quirky side of things um he even got her like all these gifts i don't know if it was for mardi gras or for what but he did get her a bunch of gifts um amber is this sweet girl who was a flight attendant she was married twice before this experiment and she got cheated on in the process and you know became a little bit jaded from that i feel like she was about to rush back into a marriage so um even though her and paul they had a connection low-key I'm glad it didn't end up working out between those two because I feel like she needs time to heal she needs time to just slow down and you know figure out what you're doing before you just rush into marriage you've been married twice and you can't be above 35 so I think she needs to chill out with you know rushing to get married they ended up having a conversation about cheating and she talked about how uh, she was cheated on so it made her want to basically cheat back and he felt some type of way he felt like that was a red flag but she said she just meant in that relationship that's how she felt but I think that really turned him off like they had like a really awkward exchange after that but he ended up having to break her heart because he decided that you know after hearing the way Kwame was talking about Micah he wanted to make sure that he didn't lose Micah and he was going to beat him to the punch and propose first and I just feel like it was a lot of ego going on like oh I'm gonna get her before he does like even if they didn't say it out loud even if they didn't explicitly you know lay it out that way that's the way it felt him and Micah decided that he needs to go ahead and break it off with Amber before they make it official basically he really hurt Amber's feelings because Amber did not see that coming it's like he built that relationship up and just like kind of poked it and all the steam came out and then afterwards he was very insensitive talking to Kwame about the breakup and you know how he's breaking Kwame's heart when Micah literally just chose Paul over Kwame so it was they lack compassion for other people but after all the havoc that they caused together he did finally propose to Micah Micah said yes when they met she kept saying it's so weird this is so weird this is <laughs> this is so weird <laughs> I don't know I just didn't really too much care about that relationship after seeing how Micah acted with the other ladies speaking of I feel like Micah really wants to be the main character so bad. She wants all of the attention on her at all times and in a Regina George kind of way. Like she thinks she run people and she do have a little sidekick in Irina. Okay, but that don't mean you run the other women. She did have two men after her, Kwame and Paul. I think they kind of went to her head. She was clearly playing with Kwame's feelings. I feel like Kwame was like, backup for her and the only reason why she entertained him is because he was so head over heels for her and like I said she wants to be the main character so bad she loves when someone is constantly doting on her but that doesn't mean she actually has feelings for him she had the nerve to tell him that she would move forward with him if he asked and basically 
you better not be proposing to anyone else only to show up a few days later saying I want to explore other options aka breaking up with him so she could be with Paul and she was upset that he wasn't upset the way Kwame left was hilarious though like he acted like he was a he acted like he was a customer service agent the way he well I hope you have a nice day I hope you have a great experience for the rest of your time here and uh thank you for your time like the way he was talking to her <laughs> you could tell he was trying to get it out though because he was so like hurt about her just breaking his heart like that so callously but she wanted to hear him cry like she lacks any sort of empathy at all like it didn't make any sense I told y'all she was supposed to break up with Kwame and Paul was supposed to break up with Amber and she was mad it was taking him over 30 minutes to do it. She was just like, what's wrong? Like, why is it taking so long? It sh he should do that as soon as she walked in the room. Like she was, her and Irina were literally sitting up there like some cackling hands. Anytime anything went down, oh my God. Y'all please ignore this lipstick. <sighs> Not only was she complaining about how long it took for him to do it, but she laughed when she saw the girl walking in and she was hurt and was about to cry like she her first reaction was to laugh and so her and Irina was you know about to start giggling she was like oh no she really looks hurt why would she not be hurt she just got broken up with you you knew that you you sent Paul in there to do just that so for you to be laughing at this girl's pain she sent Irina over there to listen and hear this girl cry her eyes out over being dumped and you know, they were laughing at Jackie too. When Jackie was hurt about having to choose between Marshall and Josh, she was literally laughing in her face. I don't know if Jackie tears was blinding her. They didn't see what was going on, but both of them were literally laughing in her face. How dare either one of y'all laugh in somebody's face looking the way that y'all do. Anyway, so let's move on to Kwame. In Chelsea. Kwame is a former professional soccer player but he had a career ending injury and he had to pivot and now he is the head of business development in a software company. He said he feels the need to constantly throw out his accomplishments to prove that he's worthy basically because he's black. Obviously the circles he runs in are non-black. He feels like the people in those circles do not appreciate him until he talks about his degrees and his accomplishments. He also mentioned not being able to pick up his prom date because he was black. He was originally gonna go into this process and use the name Alex instead of Kwame. And it just screams self-hate. I just hate, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Cause I know that's, especially if you grew up surrounded by um, non-black people and you're the only black person, it's easy to feel singled out and like you have to assimilate. So I do have a certain sympathy for that. But just some of the things that he says, it's like, you need to embrace your blackness. Why are you constantly trying to push it down? Even though I do think that if you really want to be fair in a situation like this, that they should give them pseudonyms to use and maybe even voice changers. You know, the system is flawed. You could still serve certain biases that you have by hearing people's voices and hearing people's names and you know what I'm saying describing how you look things like that so I, I from that standpoint I get it but you know the way he said it he was just I didn't want you to think I was black that's the way it came off so his dilemma was between Chelsea and Micah he ended up telling Micah about his connection with Chelsea and how his connection with her was growing more and more because she constantly reassures him that she likes him. Whereas Micah is very evasive and kind of makes him chase after her. And he said that, you know, outside of her doing that, she's his perfect woman. And he wanted to propose within six days. But Micah basically was like, she said she wanted to exhaust all her options, but she doesn't want him to fall for anyone else in the process. She's sitting up here getting jealous of Chelsea, even though she doesn't even want, she could have him, but she didn't take that opportunity. That should have said enough to him right there. But the fact that something is going on with that self-esteem, that self-esteem is looking low. You still running after somebody you feel is out of your league or unattainable when you have somebody right there that loves your dirty draws like what is it Kwame so I already told you Micah ended up breaking up with him abruptly and 
you know, he really felt she was messed up for what she did because she did tell him not to fall for anyone else. And, you know, I believe he was low key holding back with Chelsea because of that. And so when she broke up with him, that man was hurt. When I tell you he was sobbing, he was not crying. It wasn't just a tear or two or a trembling voice. No, it was a <laughs> it was like this man was sobbing. And if I have to tell one more black man on these shows to stand up, you are on TV crying over somebody you haven't even known for two weeks. Get your life. You low key dodged a no, you high key dodged a bullet. Like you should be happy to have somebody that you know for a fact cares about you. Anyway, he ended up proposing to Chelsea by default because he knew she was a sure thing. It's giving Jared and Ayana this whole situation like that just literally popped in my head. But this is literally Jared and Ayana all over again. When they end up meeting each other, they were very pleased to see each other. Now, I will say the physical chemistry was there because they was all over each other. I mean, from this point on, we always see her makeup smeared all over his face. And it, it, and it it usually be on his nose, making his nose look extra ashy. But I'm telling you, they could not keep their hands off of each other in each other's presence from this point on. He wanted to repropose, so she had to tell him to get on one knee. And when I tell you, he gave her a nice ring. I don't have much hope for them because of how the relationship started. Sadly, Chelsea don't even realize that right now. So finally, let's move on to the love triangle that is Irina, Zach, and Bliss. Irina comes on this show talking about her insecurities with having acne scars, how that was a source of like shame for her growing up, but now she's trying to embrace it and, you know, embrace her looks and everything. But then she had the nerve to want to be a bully sidekick on this show and actively make others feel bad I just don't understand that like I don't, I don't get it but they say hurt people hurt people you have something obviously in you that makes you want to make others feel just as bad as you do about yourself and so she likes Zach Zach is somebody I felt like who was playing too much from the jump he was playing too many games oh I live under a bridge or oh, I'm a stripper da, 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 da. like I, I feel like if you have to play those type of games if you have to try to like fool people to see who's going to stick around like you deserve to get what you get but he did end up getting real at some point he admitted that his mother was a stripper and it was because they were poor they didn't have much money to eat sometimes and um eventually she passed away he broke all this down to Irina he said his past girlfriends families judged his upbringing I personally feel like he felt insecure when it came to bliss like i feel like he liked bliss bliss was a very sweet girl she made him cupcakes for his birthday she i feel like they had a good connection but i feel like when it came down to her family you know clearly she came from at least from the outside looking in a healthy well-adjusted family and he came from nothing i feel like because of what he went through in the past he felt like he wouldn't be enough for bliss and her family but with Irina, he felt more comfortable. Like I mentioned, Bliss made him cupcakes for his birthday. Irina didn't do anything for his birthday. And she's watching this girl, you know, go out of her way to make these cupcakes. And she had the nerve to ask for a candle. And I'm so glad Bliss called her out and called her weird and said it was kind of icky that you would even ask me when I've been spending all this time and making all this effort and you think you're just about to come in and feed off of what I'm doing. No, when she did come in and talk to Zach, it's like she came in to spin the narrative, whine and cry about the tension that she was having with Bliss that she caused, gave him a little half apology for for getting his birthday. She also pulled the manipulative move of, well, if you're not gonna choose me, I might as well pack my bags now because I don't have any other connection. Manipulative tactic. And she just kept comparing herself to Bliss. Like, what do you see in her that I don't have? Is it because she's older? Probably so. You're being very childish and playing childish games. It's crazy because he kept saying she's a good person she's a good person i know i've seen her heart you know she's a good person i love her but he also said he also called her vicious 
and said that she plays mean girl games. So why would you want to be with someone who you know is capable of that? Whether she's done that to you or not, if she's capable of it and she's doing it to other people, why do you think at some point in your relationship they can't come back on you? That's what I don't understand when men be choosing women. Like you see her acting this way to others. Why do you think that can't be you at some point? You just so special, huh? Bliss did tell him the real about Irina, about how she's mean girl. She plays these mean girl games. She told him like, if you can't see what's going on with Irina, if you can't see that, then I can't trust your judgment. And he felt some type of way about that. He got mad at her for trying to give him the real on Irina. Eventually he broke it off with Bliss. He broke down really bad about it too. That should have showed him right there. Like, why are you crying so hard over somebody that you don't want to be with? He ended up breaking down really bad over Bliss and he um, decided to propose to Irina by awkwardly, terribly singing this song that I, I had to fast forward child. I couldn't get through it. But that was the end of episode three. Once we get to episode four, we'll see them meet. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this season so far. Down in the comments, I would love to hear your opinion. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace. go ahead and talk about this love triangle between Zach, Irina, and Bliss. 